It's David Golly from Pentagon Solutions and I'd like to take a look at one of the first areas a new user should be looking at in Revit and that is uh, using levels. This is the Revit Architecture 2011 interface and um, I'm simply going to click on new for my projects. The nice thing about this new button is this will start me into exactly with the template that I want. Um, if you want to look at the configuration of the template if you hit the R button and you go into options you'll be able to look at um, file locations and see what default template it's using. The default I'm using a metric one which is default GBR ENU. So that loads up the various um, family, system family such as walls and windows that I actually uh, might want to use. Okay so let's have a look at the levels to start with. Um, we've got level 0 and level 1 here. So one of the first areas I want to look at is go to my elevations. So these are my elevation views. I've got four in here. I've got east, north, south, and west. And really, one of the first areas that you probably want to do is actually change the name of the level. So if I simply click on it, it brings up my witness line. I can actually change the um, dimensions or the height of the level in here. But I can also click on the level and rename it. So I could call that ground floor and hit enter it'll ask me do I want to rename the corresponding views and this is important because then this will tie into my floor plan so if I say yes level 0 will rename the ground floor. The nice thing about 2011 is uh, you've got the contextual letter along the top so it means when you select one of the levels you'll see on the ribbon uh, tab it's slightly green uh, you've got all your editing options. Um, another feature about 2011 is um, if we look in the view tab we can go to the user interface and we can add in our properties. Um, this is a bit like um, AutoCAD now so you've got a feature now that I can actually click on the actual level itself and I can change the information in the properties pane. So if I wanted the level height to be 2650 I can change it in there and I can change that to first floor rename the corresponding views and it will update. Adding a new level in couldn't be simpler. If I go to my home tab and if I look at my level I can click on level again the contextual editing uh, on the ribbon comes up. I've got lots of different options. I mean I could use the snap options in here or I could just click two points and even though I've got the level at the wrong position if I hit escape I can go back in and change this information. I can either click on the actual numerical value here for the level or again I can pick the level up again and click on the difference in the, in the height in the floor so I could say in this case it's 2400 so we can edit in either location and here I could say look it's actually 5250 and change that information again I can change, change the level name in here that will ask me to rename corresponding views and you'll see I've got my um, first floor, ground floor and wall plate in here I can also change the position of the bubble head so I can take it off here and make it over on this side. Maybe I'm a bit tight for uh, space. I can use the grip to actually change the position. Again, you'll notice the line, actually getting them in a uh, line and a position. And again, same for this side. And again, of course, I can take the bubble head on both sides and deselect it on an opposite side. Every time we create a new level, um, it actually creates the corresponding floor plan. Well, we can create what's called a non-story um, level. So I don't want to create the corresponding floor plan. And you might want this on occasion, say, for reference levels, etc. in there. So I'm going to go back in the level. Where it has the option saying make floor plan or make plan view, I'm going to deselect that. And rather than clicking in my position, I'm going to use this by using my offset option. So I'm going to go to pick lines. I'm going to say this is an offset of minus a thousand or a thousand in there don't even need to type the minus in so if I hover over you can see it is dependent what side so I hover over my ground floor and click I've got my level 3 I can change that I'll add another one in by mistake very simple just pick it up delete it I can change my level 3 click on it and I can call that foundation so I've got my foundation in at minus a thousand um, again, a lot of users get confused and think in the text on the screen that you have to change the text. You don't. You simply change the scale of the view. Remember, this is how it will actually come in the sheet at the end. Again, you can see that will um, update in the background, so it's 2.5mm text. 
it's multiplying that by the factor of say 1 to 50 or 1 to 100 etc in there. So that's how we set up some level information. Um, once you've got the basic levels in, this allows you to start building on um, your walls and your other components. So I can actually click in my ground floor. You can see my foundation isn't in my floor plans. If I decided at a later stage I wanted to add that in, I could simply go in to the view tab. I could go to plan views and floor plan. It's picked up that I don't have my foundation in there and if I hit the OK button and give it its default scale it'll be populated. So I hit OK, again foundation comes in. And again we can delete that out at a later stage. So I'm going to go into my ground floor and I'm going to make a mistake on purpose here. So I'm going to start with the home tab. I'm going to go to wall, pick the type of wall that I want. You'll see in the properties um, panel it comes up now so I could pick say my dense cavity wall. And I'm going to leave this unconnected and because this is really where you should be changing and um, where the walls tied into. I really want it to tie it into the first floor but by default it might be coming up unconnected. So I've made a mistake Say I'm a new user to Revit and um, I'm putting in my walls. Again, we can very simply tie up and drag back these walls. And you've probably seen this in my other videos in here. Um, lots of new users to Revit will be tempted to delete. Um, you don't need to do this. You've got plenty of tools in here you can actually clean up. Um, you, plus you've got your witness lines that you can actually change the information very easily on the screen. But I've made a mistake, I'll see this in my 3D view. Um, I'll also see this in my east view in here. Um, that it's actually shot past. It's gone to an unconnected height of 8 metres. I don't want that. So I simply hover over one of the walls. Hit the tab key. Just above caps lock. Select up all my walls. I can go into my properties. I can very easily do it on the left hand side now. And I can say the top constraint is actually my first floor and they'll all tie in. So if I go to my north or my east views, I'll get to see that information. Again, we can pop our levels out because we might want to see that level of detail on our, on our final sheets. Um, one last point I'm going to make out for this exercise is it's all been very well tying into a ground floor at zero, but in real life and from an engineering point of view and an architectural point of view, um, we're normally dealing with above ordinance datum. So this is um, at a certain height above sea level or the ordnance survey measurements and I want them to change that information in there. So I'm going to go to manage and I'm going to go to position sorry coordinates and I'm going to say specify coordinates at a point. So I go to specify coordinates at a point I can say at ground level if I click on the level it'll say well the elevation is actually zero. I can say well actually no this is 103 meters 103.5 meters or 103 500 um, millimeters above sea level. So if I hit OK, now it doesn't automatically update. What I've got to do is select one of my levels, go into the element or type properties, and actually change the elevation base from project to shared. When I hit OK, the information will update. And this is why we want to work with levels and um, we're actually tying into engineering and architectural detail um, now. It means now I can go in and change my information so if I go and change the likes of my wall plate heights or my first floors um, it will automatically update and tie into that datum. I'm David Golley from Pentagon Solutions. Thanks for listening.